In our ongoing desire to comprehend a vast and mysterious universe, seeing is not just believing, seeing is everything. While we experience life on Earth using all five of our senses, in space, virtually everything we know about the universe comes to us through our ability to see. We gather up the light of the stars and galaxies with our telescopes, and by analyzing that light in a multitude of ways, we gradually unlock the secrets of the cosmos. The invention of the telescope changed our understanding of the universe forever because it allowed the human eye to overcome a natural barrier and see objects that are much fainter and farther away than we would otherwise see. But there's also another barrier that limits what we can perceive when we look out into space, a barrier that can be overcome if we can learn how to see the universe through very different eyes. That second barrier exists because what we experience as light is really a wave of energy. And whether we can see it or not depends on the length of that wave. The human eye can only perceive light waves that range from about 39 to 75 millionths of a centimeter long. That narrow range known as the visible spectrum, includes all the colors of the rainbow. But where the eye stops, the spectrum of electromagnetic waves, of which light is just one small part, continues. Now, the opening up of that spectrum at many other wavelengths has given astronomers a cosmic rainbow of new possibilities to explore. It began with radio waves. For decades after radio was invented, no one thought it would be possible to receive radio waves from space. Then, in 1931, an American engineer proved that idea wrong. Carl Jansky was working for Bell Telephone Laboratories trying to identify natural sources of radio interference that might affect transatlantic communications. With a special receiver set up in a New Jersey field, Jansky found a mysterious hiss coming from the sky. Jansky discovered the radio hiss was always strongest when the Milky Way, especially the bright central region of our galaxy, was above the horizon. Something toward the center of our galaxy was producing radio waves. And there were other sources too. An entire radio universe just waiting to be explored. But what kind of universe would the new technology reveal? Looking at the sky through radio eyes, our entire Milky Way shines with the cool glow of hydrogen gas. Even parts of the galaxy that are blocked from our view by thick clouds of interstellar dust can be mapped in this way. Astronomers have used this convenient fact to uncover the spiral structure of the Milky Way. And radio waves can also help reveal more energetic phenomena. A supernova, the explosive death of a massive star, and one of the most spectacular sights in the universe. For centuries after the event, a bubble of energized atoms expands outward, the far-flung remains of the obliterated star.
As the supernova bubble crashes into the surrounding interstellar gas, it gives off radio waves, creating what looks like a bright wreath of radio energy. A black hole is formed when matter is squeezed to infinite density, creating a bottomless pit in space. Once inside, not even light can escape the black hole's irresistible pull. On the way in, gas and debris swirl ever closer to the edge of the black hole. Some of this gas manages to narrowly escape and instead feeds massive high-speed jets of electrically charged particles, which fire outward along the black hole's axis of rotation and become strong emitters of radio energy. Today, astronomers know the radio waves emanating from the center of our galaxy, the same signal Carl Jansky first discovered, come from a giant black hole as large as a solar system. And the Milky Way is not alone. Thanks to radio telescopes, it's now clear that most galaxies contain monster black holes, sometimes with active jets, which are among the strongest sources in the radio sky. Seeing the universe through radio eyes has given us a new perspective, allowing astronomers to discover and study phenomena that were once completely unknown. But radio is just the beginning. There are many other ways to see the universe, especially when we leave Earth behind and begin to observe with new eyes in space. Discover the past with exclusive history documentaries and ad-free podcasts presented by world-renowned historians, all from History Hit. Watch them on your smart TV or on the go with your mobile device. Download the app now to explore everything from the wonders of ancient Pompeii and the mystery of the princes in the tower to the life of Anne Boleyn and D-Day. Sign up via the link in the description. that is most familiar to the eye is the universe revealed by light. As stars and galaxies shine across the vast reaches of space, their subtle colors carry important clues about temperature, chemical composition, and distance. But all the colors of light we can see are just small parts of a much larger spectrum that stretches out well beyond the range of human vision from very long to very short wavelengths. At wavelengths shorter than the human eye can see, light transitions into other forms of energy that can only be detected with special sensors. And because it takes a lot of energy to produce them, these shorter wavelengths, like ultraviolet, X-rays, gamma rays, are ideal for studying some of the most energetic and most violent phenomena in nature. The catch is that Earth's atmosphere blocks most high-energy forms of radiation. That's good news for life on Earth's surface which depends on the atmosphere like a protective blanket. But it also means astronomers need to get their telescopes off the ground if they want to explore the high-energy universe. The Hubble Space Telescope makes an ideal starting point. Its cameras see what our own eyes see. But by using special filters, Astronomers can also zero in on the hotter, ultraviolet part of the spectrum. By showing only the very hottest stars, Hubble gives astronomers a chance to peer deep into a galaxy's core. Another telescope, 
the Galaxy Evolution Explorer, or GALAX, is dedicated to looking for sources that shine bright in ultraviolet light. These are the most energetic and short-lived stars we know, and astronomers believe they may hold clues to how the galaxies formed and evolved. That's because the hottest stars we see today may resemble the very first stars that formed when the universe was just a small fraction of its current age. When those stars died, their cores collapsed to form black holes. And some theories suggest the black holes merged to form even larger black holes like those we see at the centers of galaxies today. Galax has also found other ways to bring hidden details about the stars to light. For example, the aging and bloated star known as Myra is too red and too cool to be observed in the ultraviolet. But Galax has found that Myra is generating a wind of high-speed particles, which smash into the surrounding interstellar gas, creating a glowing tail that reveals the star's movements for the past 30,000 years. Leaving the ultraviolet behind, the Chandra X-ray Observatory is our guide to an even higher temperature X-ray universe. To collect X-rays, Chandra uses a series of four nested cylinders coated with iridium to reflect and direct the X-rays into a sensitive detector. Only objects with temperatures of millions of degrees are able to produce X-rays through heat. Here, a supernova that was witnessed by the astronomer Tycho in 1572 appears like a frozen fireworks display when seen in X-rays. One of the most spectacular sights in the X-ray universe is this stunning panorama from Chandra, showing the region near the center of our Milky Way galaxy. This area is hidden from optical telescopes by dense clouds of interstellar dust. But X-rays, which pass right through the dust, unveil a chaotic spacescape full of churning hot gas and bright specks that could signify where neutron stars and black holes are devouring companion stars. At the very heart of this fascinating region is a bright cloud of gas surrounding what is thought to be the location of the Milky Way's giant central black hole. When combined with a view in infrared light, Chandra's X-ray image is our most revealing glimpse yet of the most extreme location in our galaxy. Looking beyond X-rays, astronomers have also begun to explore the universe at even shorter wavelengths and higher energies. NASA's orbiting Fermi telescope is designed to detect gamma rays. Fermi registers their arrival as they rip through canisters filled with metal plates and split into pairs of matter and antimatter particles. This design allows Fermi to deduce the energy and incoming direction of the gamma rays. One of its most surprising results has been the discovery of two giant bubbles of energetic particles emanating outward from the center of our galaxy. The cause of these bubbles, each 25,000 light years tall, remains unknown. They could be linked to outbursts from the Milky Way's giant black hole. Even more perplexing has been the mystery of gamma ray bursts, vast explosions that appear all over the sky at great distances, far from our own galaxy. 
astronomers believe they may mark the births of black holes from the collapse of massive stars. Perhaps only the Big Bang itself can top an event as powerful as a black hole's birth. But to look for evidence of the Big Bang, astronomers must change perspective yet again and see the universe in a different light. The more we can expand our vision beyond what the eye can see, the more we can learn about the universe. Even in the narrow range of light that the human eye responds to, small differences in color can yield great storehouses of information. Here, with this magnificent view of the Whirlpool Galaxy, over 30 million light years from Earth, the Hubble Space Telescope plays witness to a great cosmic cycle. The giant spiral waves sweeping through the disk of the galaxy show where vast clouds of hydrogen gas, triggered by gravity, are collapsing to form new stars. The stars light up the gas, which gives off a pink light. In comparison, stars are not forming near the galaxy's central region. There, a population of middle-aged stars gives off a cooler, yellower light. But now, as seen through an infrared camera on the Hubble, we find the galaxy is threaded through with glowing wisps of interstellar dust. The particles that make up the dust are tiny, like smoke, but collectively, and through infrared eyes, they reveal what is going on below the threshold of human vision. Infrared telescopes offer astronomers a way to probe the cool universe at wavelengths longer than the human eye can see. Since the atmosphere blocks most wavelengths of infrared, the telescopes that are best able to exploit this part of the spectrum are in space. The Spitzer Space Telescope is sensitive to the infrared light that is nearest to visible light. With the Spitzer, many celestial objects look familiar, but also just a bit different. Here, the North American Nebula gets its name from bright and dark clouds of gas and dust that vaguely resemble the familiar outline of the continent, complete with the Gulf of Mexico. But using Spitzer's infrared vision, the dark regions suddenly light up, revealing the structure of the dust clouds. Pushing farther into the infrared universe is the Herschel Space Observatory, currently the world's largest orbiting telescope. Herschel looks at longer wavelengths than Spitzer, so it sees even cooler objects. Its specialty is peering into dark, dust-shrouded clouds to see the embryos of newly formed stars. Herschel has shown that even within the coolest, darkest clouds of our galaxy, matter is in motion, like a vast cloud of billowing smoke. Herschel has also cast its gaze beyond the Milky Way to our nearest galactic neighbor, the Andromeda Galaxy. In this view, we see Andromeda first through visible light with its bright stars and dark lanes of dust. But with Herschel, the stars fade to black, and the dark dust shines like brilliant ribbons.
infrared telescopes are beginning to probe the most distant corners of the expanding universe, where light from rapidly receding galaxies is shifted to longer and longer wavelengths. In the future, infrared telescopes will be crucial as astronomers continue to peer farther and deeper in search of the very first galaxies and the first stars. But even farther down the spectrum where infrared light transitions into radio waves, astronomers have found a signal that announces the beginning of the universe itself. That signal, which comes to us from every direction in space, first showed up by accident in a horn-shaped antenna operated by Bell Labs in New Jersey. Two researchers, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, made the discovery in the mid-1960s, not far from where decades earlier, Carl Jansky first detected radio waves from the Milky Way. Without realizing it, Penzias and Wilson had discovered the cosmic background, light that was emitted by our universe when it was filled with white-hot gas in the aftermath of the Big Bang, nearly 14 billion years ago. Today, satellites are probing the cosmic background and mapping its features in detail. These small variations in wavelength and temperature can reveal volumes of information about the physical properties of the early universe and may eventually help us understand what caused the Big Bang. Four hundred years ago, astronomers first turned the telescope to the heavens and discovered there was more to the sky than meets the eye. Now, a host of new eyes in space, as well as radio ears on the ground, have opened up the entire spectrum, giving us a cosmic rainbow of perspectives as we try to piece together how the universe works. It's not just what we see that has changed over the course of this incredible journey, but the idea of seeing itself. Of all the places on Earth where humans can feel close to the heavens, none can beat the rocky desolation of Chile's Atacama Desert. Here, where rarely a cloud is seen, peak after towering mountain peak thrusts into the dry, still air. And each night, as darkness descends, the stars shine with an unblinking clarity that rivals the view from space itself. Once nothing more than a distant curiosity, this harsh and remote landscape has become the focal point for some of the most exciting developments in our exploration of the universe. And there is much more to come. Today's state-of-the-art telescopes are larger and more expensive than ever. So to get the most out of them, astronomers want to put those telescopes where they can be used to their best advantage. The Atacama offers just such a place. It's the driest desert on Earth with only a handful of cloudy nights each year. The airflow is remarkably steady, and it's far from cities and towns that throw light into the night sky. Put it all together, and you have a gateway to cosmic discovery. Today, Chile is home to some of the world's most impressive observatories. And here, high atop Cerro Paranal, is the most impressive of all. This is the VLT, short for Very Large Telescope. 
despite its name, it's actually four large telescopes, plus four smaller ones, which can either work independently or together, like a giant light-collecting machine. Part of the secret to the VLT's success is its location. Perched more than 2.6 kilometers above sea level, Cerro Paranal boasts the ideal atmospheric conditions for astronomy. But there is more than an exceptional sky at work here. To produce views that challenge the Hubble Space Telescope for beauty and clarity, the VLT also relies on some exceptional technology. It starts with each of the four large telescope's main mirrors. Each one is a single piece of aluminum coated glass 8.2 meters across, but less than 20 centimeters thick. Such a large but thin mirror would naturally bend under its own weight. To prevent that from happening, the VLT employs a strategy for keeping its four giant mirrors in shape. Each rests on a bed of 150 pistons, called actuators, which can press on the mirror at different points. The actuators bend the mirror by just the right amount to maintain its ability to focus, no matter how the telescope is moved or tilted. Such precision is perfect for roaming the rich star fields of the southern Milky Way. Here, like a bubble frozen in time, the VLT spies the Dumbbell Nebula, a ballooning cloud of gas made up of the outer layers of a dying star. Nearly 20 times farther away, the VLT finds a burst of celestial fireworks in mid-eruption. The largest and brightest stars in this cluster would outshine our sun eight million times over. These images are all the more breathtaking because they are taken from Earth, not from space, by an observatory that is swimming in air. Even on the clearest of nights, unseen turbulence in the air pushes starlight around as it journeys through Earth's atmosphere. The same effect is what makes the stars twinkle. To get around this problem at VLT, all the light gathered from each telescope's main mirror is bounced onto a second mirror, which can rapidly deform to reverse the distortions caused by the moving air. Like other observatories in Chile, the VLT is in a perfect position to put its cutting-edge technology to use. In the northern hemisphere, the central regions of our Milky Way galaxy can barely be seen above the horizon. But in the south, the galactic center arches high overhead. Shrouded behind dark ribbons of interstellar dust, the center of the Milky Way is an elusive target. But the telescopes of the VLT can also detect infrared light, which can pass through the dust. In this unprecedented image, the VLT has revealed the spectacular concentration of stars at the heart of our galaxy. Here, dozens of giant stars crowd our region that is only two light years across. Astronomers can now return to this view 
again and again to see the stars moving as they orbit the giant but unseen black hole lurking at the heart of the Milky Way. In every journey, there is always another mountain, another spectacular view. What we will find, we do not know. What we do know is that in the journey to explore the cosmos, our path leads through the Atacama. By night, the skies over Chile's Atacama Desert offer a dazzling spectacle. Some of the best views of our universe found anywhere in the world. By day, the stars fade away, and the giant telescopes on their mountain perches retreat into their domes shunning the harsh southern sun. Yet, even in broad daylight, there is still plenty of universe to explore. Radio waves reaching the Earth from the depths of space carry information about distant events in our galaxy and far beyond. For years, radio astronomers have been scanning the skies with giant dishes and picking up the faint signals that come from sources all over the universe. But there's one frontier left to conquer. Astronomers call it the submillimeter. That just means radio waves that are very short, less than one millimeter across. It turns out some of the most interesting phenomena in the universe, from the births of stars to the most distant galaxies, are giving off energy at those wavelengths. But there's a problem. Water vapor in Earth's atmosphere is very good at blocking submillimeter waves. So, to see the universe at those wavelengths, astronomers need to go to one of the highest and driest places on Earth. And that place is here, five kilometers above sea level. Nestled among the high peaks of the Andes Mountains, astronomers are building the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, ALMA for short. When completed, it will be the largest and most sophisticated radio observatory on Earth. At its heart, ALMA consists of 66 large dish antennas, some built in Europe, some in North America, and some in Japan, reflecting the international partnership behind the project. Each dish is a nearly perfect parabola, precisely tuned to pick up signals at submillimeter wavelengths. Each dish on its own would be an impressive tool for exploring the heavens. But at ALMA, the dishes will work together as one, creating a giant steerable receiver that will probe the skies with unprecedented sensitivity, gradually building up a view of the universe as we've never seen it before. One of ALMA's highest priorities will be exploring the complex tangle of interstellar gas and dust that spans the plane of our Milky Way galaxy. In doing so, it will not only witness the formation of stars, but in some cases, it will discern young planets emerging from the debris that surrounds those stars something that happened in our own solar system four and a half billion years ago.
satisfy the variety of groundbreaking observations that astronomers hope to make with ALMA, the array needs to have more than just a large number of dishes. It must also be able to change the arrangement of its dishes depending on the kind of observation that is being made. For some targets, ALMA will work best if most of its antennas are clustered towards the center of the array. At other times, they will need to be much more spread out to increase the precision of the entire array. At its widest configuration, ALMA's antennas will be spread out over 14 kilometers. Moving these antennas around will not be easy. Each one is a high-precision scientific instrument that also happens to weigh about 100 tons. To do the job, ALMA has two special transporters, as massive and muscular as they are maneuverable. The transporters feature 28 independently controlled wheels and can move fast across the high desert roads. But in practice, when one of Alma's antennas is being transported, the driver will aim for a gentler ride. The ability to adjust the locations of its antennas is just one way in which ALMA will optimize its view of the heavens and bring a new level of detail to our exploration of the distant universe. Because ALMA will be able to zero in on small and remote objects, it will be perfect for isolating and measuring the properties of very distant galaxies. Looking back to a time when the universe was less than 1 20th of its current age, and the very first galaxies were forming out of the residue of the Big Bang. By taking advantage of some of the most beautiful skies in the world, this incredible new observatory will help transport astronomers deep into the past. What they hope to find will answer some of our deepest questions about the origins of the universe. In one of the driest and most desolate pockets of Chile's Atacama Desert sits a maze of weathered rock formations, sand dunes, dry lake beds, and salt deposits that glint like snow in the desert sun. Here, more than anywhere, the otherworldly quality of Chile's extraordinary landscape seems at its most intense. This place is called Valle de la Luna, the Valley of the Moon. Tourists come to experience what it might feel like to set foot on another planet. In the 1990s, researchers came here to test an early prototype for a rover on Mars. The Atacama seems so much like it's part of another world, perhaps it's fitting that now it's leading us to new worlds across the galaxy. At the VLT on Cerro Paranal, astronomers have zoomed in on Beta Pictoris, a nearby star easily visible to the naked eye in the southern hemisphere. For years, it's been known that a swirling disk of dusty debris surrounds Beta Pictoris. And more recent observations indicate that at the center of the disk, there's a gap roughly the same size as the orbit of Saturn in our solar system. Astronomers suspected a large planet was responsible for the gap, 
because a planet's gravity would sweep that part of the disk clear of the dust and small chunks of debris that had coalesced around the newborn star. But finding such a planet is like looking for a very small needle in a very large haystack. In 2003, by using the VLT's infrared capability, astronomers were able to spot a faintly glowing dot located very near Beta Pictoris. It looked promising, so they waited. Six years later, their suspicions were confirmed. By 2009, the object had moved to the other side of the star, clearly showing that it is a planet orbiting around Beta Pictoris. The planet is estimated to be eight times more massive than Jupiter, not a place where we would expect life to emerge. But where one planet exists, there could be more. The Beta Pictoris system, located only 60 light years from Earth, is just one more reason why astronomers are drawn to the Southern Hemisphere. By sheer chance, the night sky we see below the equator is particularly rich for stargazers. For those used to the more subdued skies of the north, a first glimpse at the southern Milky Way with its vast star clouds and dark tendrils of interstellar dust is simply awe-inspiring. Taking a cue from the scientists at the great observatories, more and more backyard astronomers are now coming to Chile for a chance to glimpse what they cannot see in the north. Here, even a quick scan with binoculars can offer rewarding views of the region's signature constellation, the Southern Cross. Elsewhere, an ordinary digital camera can bring out the subtle colors in the glow of ionized gases where new stars are forming. Like their professional counterparts, the amateur astronomers who come to Chile have found that technology can help them get the most out of the view. For example, the movement of air will cause an image to blur slightly no matter how good the seeing conditions. But by taking hundreds of images of the same object and then digitally combining them, it's possible to create images of astonishing clarity. Here, the method is used to bring out fine details in the Eta Carina Nebula, one of the great spectacles of the southern sky. Humans have been looking at the stars since before written history and exploring the universe with telescopes for centuries. But it may be that nowhere on Earth have humans found such a strong connection to the night sky as in the Atacama. It truly is a stargazer's paradise. Perhaps it requires being in a place that is far removed from earthly affairs to see the possibilities that lie beyond our own world. With each generation, we have seen farther and encountered wonders greater than we can imagine. From the barren rocks of the Atacama, the path now leads deep into the galaxy. We do not know if our descendants will ever venture to the stars, but should they step away from Earth's embrace, we can, from here, begin to see the way. In the Atacama, we stand poised at the cosmic doorway. What lies beyond is the road to cosmic infinity. <laughs>